हेलो एवरीवन लेट्स टॉक टुडे अबाउट जे डी सैलेंजर एस ए एल आई एन जी ई आर जेरोम डेविड सैलेंजर एन अमेरिकन नॉवलिस्ट एंड शॉर्ट स्टोरी राइटर बॉर्न इन 1919, डाइड इन 2010. He was born in Manhattan, New York. I didn't find much interesting uh, things there. in his life of that extent so i have started talking of his works and for a few minutes we'll talk about something personal of him when we talk of the notable works by jerome david salinger the most famous among them is द कैचर इन द राई आर वाई ई द कैचर इन द राई पब्लिश इन नाइनटीन फिफ्टी वन दिस नॉवल इज प्रस्क्राइब देयर इन वेरियस यूनिवर्सिटीज इंक्लूडिंग इग्नो इन इंडिया अदर वर्क दैट वी हैव ऑफ सैलेंजर इज known as nine stories published in 1953 as its names as as its name suggests it is a short story collection the name of this collection is nine stories published in 1953 then we have another collection of a novella and a short story and it's known as Franny and Zoe, F R A N N Y. Franny and Zoe, Z O O E Y. Published in 1961. Then, Raise High the Roof Beam. Carpenters and Simor. An introduction. This is the collection of two novels. Published in 1963. Salinger published several short stories in Story magazine. The name of the magazine itself was Story. Okay, so his several short stories was pub were published in that magazine, known as Story. Then uh, one uh, short story that we have, which got critical acclaim. by the people and it is known as a perfect day for banana fish very interesting one one must uh, go through with the text of this short story a perfect day for banana fish uh, this appeared in a magazine called the the new yorker in 1948 and uh, this uh, novella hapworth 16 1924 is also very famous one hapworth h a p w o r t h 16 1924 it's a novella i hope you know what the novella is see <coughs> one genre that is long in length is called a novel the other one which which one is uh, very short in comparison to the novel is called short story something that comes in between novel and short story is called novella okay for example when you talk of the heart of darkness by uh, this joseph conrad that actually is a novella when we think of its 
length so hapworth 16 1924 is a novella by jd salinger uh, salinger met with the hemingway once and uh, they had good relation means they were very well acquainted with each other so we have one remark by that great novelist Ernest Hemingway he told about Salinger once and I quote Jesus he has a helluva talent Jesus he has a helluva talent helluva talent Both of his biographers speculate that Salinger drew upon his wartime experiences in several stories. Which World War? World War II. So, means uh, J.D. Salinger actively participated in World War II. He was the part of the army. Not actually the soldier. He had some different jobs there. But... Uh, he had that experience and in that way you can say that uh, his experiences were somewhat similar to Ernest Hemingway. The wartime experience of Hemingway ultimately uh, leads him to uh, write that novel Farewell to Arms. So here also we have a novelist, J.D. Salinger, whose wartime experiences comes, come again and again in his writing, as his biographers also suggest the same. See, uh, very occasionally we find one writer who you know admires the other writers and we get acquainted with that of course when when one you know comes in the field of writing obviously the person has experience of several writers the person has read till the date so they they, they develop the kind of admiration for some of the writers so here we have the list of some of the favorite writers of J.D. Salinger and they all are very famous and I, I have included those names here to make you understand that these are the writers, the famous writers about whom you must know something. I, I mean uh, it does not, it should not seem that you are not aware of those names, you are not acquainted with those personalities. Since being the student of literature you must be aware of these names. Of course there are several names all over the world but uh, at least uh, some of the names uh, must be known to you at this time so I'm talking of uh, the writers whom he loved the writers whom J.D. Salinger loved and those are from different countries see how you know the literature crosses the boundary of language First one is Kafka, Franz Kafka, the novelist from Germany, who is known for his novels like Metamorphosis, who is known for his writing on existentialism. Then we have Flaubert the French novelist who is greatly known for his masterpiece Madame Bavari Madame Bavari then we have in the list Leo Tolstoy Leo Tolstoy who is very famous for his magnum opus War and Peace and Anna Karenina then we have Dostoevsky, the Russian one. Tolstoy was also the Russian novelist. Dostoevsky. I, I think after 
Tolstoy, the names, the name which comes in Russian novels, you know. Uh, of course, Chekhov was Chekhov is also there. Anton Chekhov. And we we have that name here also, I think. Yes, <laughs> Chekhov is there in between Tolstoy and Dostoevsky. Uh, so Anton Chekhov is also very famous novelist. Dostoevsky is known for his work, Brothers Karamazov, Crime and Punishment. Very famous novelist. Then Proust, P R O U S T. Then we have Lorca, L O R C A. Keats, the great romantic poet, John Keats. Known for his works like Endymion and Hyperion. Then Burns, Robert Burns, the great Scottish poet, Robert Burns, who says, "My love is like red, red rose, newly sprung in the month of June." Robert Burns. Then Emily Bronte. who is famous for her masterpiece Wuthering Heights then Jane Austen the British woman novelist Henry James American novelist very famous for his work like The Golden Bowl then William Blake the great mysticist mystic sorry and poet famous for his songs of innocence and songs of experience then we have coleridge asti coleridge very famous for his the rhyme of the ancient mariner christabel and other poems he admired fisgerald as well even you know uh, this person jd salinger wanted to be another fitzgerald <laughs> he 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 saw himself as next fitzgerald so these are the names of the writers whom he loved let me recount their names franz kafka flaubert leo tolstoy anton chekhov fyodor dostoevsky Proust, Lorca, Johann Keats, Robert Burns, Emily Bronte, Jane Austen, Henry James, William Blake, S.T. Coleridge, and Fitzgerald. One interesting thing that I found while this, uh, you know, reading about Salinger, how he, you know, was. Uh, much inspired by indian writings by indian mystics by indian people he read the gospel of shri ramakrishna ramakrishna you know guru of swami vivekananda so he read the gospel of shri ramakrishna became an adherent of ramakrishna's advaita vedanta hinduism advaita are you aware of this term advaita advaita means no duality is there means god is just one means uh, there is no bifurcation of god as soul or over soul hmm. that is advaita so the philosophy of advaita in hinduism in sanatan dharma one of the great propagator of that philosophy was shri ram ramkrishna so he read the gospel of shri ramkrishna and uh, became an adherent of ramkrishna's advaita vedanta hinduism even uh, he read uh, the writings of swami vivekananda as well the disciple of shri ramkrishna in the story one of his story that is known as teddy t e d d y teddy features a 10 year old child who expresses vedantic insights so that uh, depiction of vedantic philosophy 
Vedantic insights in his uh, writing shows that how much he was affected by those writings. See, as we have a poet there like uh, W.B. Yeats or uh, T.S. Eliot, they were uh, much more inspired by even uh, when we talk of American uh, poet Rolf Waldo Emerson, R.W. Emerson, they, they were m much more inspired with these uh, Vedantic thoughts and philosophies. They, they read about these things. Not about these things, but they read the originals. So, Salinger, see the personality of Salinger was like this, uh, you know, his uh, thinking, his thoughts used to be fluctuated much. He was not, uh, you know, much centered in a single, uh, you know, single uh, thinking. His thinking used to be, you know, fluctuated. And in one of those fluctuations, he read these, these all things the Gospels of Ramakrishna and uh, writings of Vivekananda and one more thing that is very interesting that I found about him that is being see here the beauty of my roof three parrots the field very beautiful see how many parrots are there four parrots very interesting very beautiful okay so one more thing that i found in the writing of margaret salinger who was margaret salinger she was the daughter of salinger margaret salinger wrote in her memoir m-e-m-o-i-r memoir the name of her memoir is dream catcher that she believes her parents would not have been married nor would he, she have been born had her father not read the teachings of Lahiri Mahashay. Who was Lahiri Mahashay? Are you aware of him? A guru of Paramahansa Yogananda. So who was Paramahansa Yogananda? Which brought the possibility of enlightenment to those following the path of Grihastha. See. <coughs> After Swami Vivekananda, the person who spread Vedantic philosophy at the international level is none other than Paramhansa Yogananda. And on his name, on the names of Paramhansa Yogananda, you know, we have the names of the streets here in India, even in Ranchi. When you go from uh, this station road, towards Igno Center, you will find the name of the road is Paramhansa Yogananda Street, Paramhansa Yogananda Marg. Even in Delhi, I found the name of the road is Paramhansa Yogananda Marg. I, I hope in other cities as well his name can be there. Okay. So Paramhansa Yogananda, his guru, the name of his guru was Lahiri Mahashay. Very interesting thing about Lahiri Mahashay was that he was a Grihastha, means he had a family. He had wife and children and even then he was a yogi. So his teaching, his sermon shows, suggests that even if being being a family man, even if being a grihastha, one can become yogi. That uh, Salinger found in his teachings, in the teachings of Lahiri Mahashay. Lahiri Mahashay was actually born in West Bengal but he, uh, you know, lived most of his uh, life uh, in Varanasi, in the Banaras. So Kashi is very much related with the personality of Lahiri Mahashay. Uh, so, Margaret Salinger, the daughter of J.D. Salinger, tells that his father read the teachings of Lahiri Mahashay and that ultimately became the tool for the marriage of him and his uh, her mother and ultimately 
she was born okay let's start with the magnum opus the masterpiece of salinger the name of the novel is the catcher in the rye r y e when you talk of its genre it's a, a realistic fiction and another genre that that we can relate it to, to is coming of age fiction initially it was published in serial form as we know in the time of uh, charles dickens when he used to write novels he used to write it in serial forms and that's why we have very long and lengthy novels of charles dickens here we have catcher in the rye the catcher in the rye initially it was formed in the it was published in the form of serials means in fractions and it was publishing like that in during 1945 to 46 ultimately it was published in a single form in a single novel in 1951 so when it comes to know what is the date of publication you will say 1951 because on in that year it was published in the form of a novel okay it was originally intended for adults adults means you know very well after adolescence the age which comes is called adulthood in legal terms the people after 18 so it was originally intended for adults but is often read by adolescents adolescents they they means teenagers they they read it why for its theme of angst and alienation what is angst angst is actually the feeling of anxiety it is not concerned with anger angst means the feeling of anxiety alienation how one one feels how he or she has become you know alien for the other people how they are very very different from other people that feeling is called alienation so teenagers they read uh, this novel the catcher in the rye for for these kind of understanding for the understanding of angst and anxiety and uh, as a critique on superficiality in society superficiality in society living in a society when we see the people when we see the behavior of the people we we understand that how sometimes they 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 behave very superficially how on the superficial level on the upper level they are someone and on the other side they are someone else how their identity original identity is not matched so that critique of that superficiality that is there in this novel and due to which this is much more appreciated by the teenagers as well by the adolescents as well see while talking of any novel before uh, talking of the plot or the characters one must be aware of its genre it's a theme it's a setting okay so theme knowing the th knowing theme is very important okay the questions come from theme as well most of the times so while writing the answers in your MA examination so you must be aware of the themes and for that uh, uh, there is the need of reading text and if you don't read the text then you at least you must know the themes of the novel so other themes those are there in this novel are you know complex issues several complex issues like uh, innocence identity belonging loss 
कनेक्शन सेक्स हाई आई थिंक मोस्ट ऑफ दी नॉवल्स दो आर प्रस्क्राइब्ड इन इग्नू एम एस सिलेबस दे डील विद दिस यू नो कॉम्प्लेक्स इश्यू ऑफ सेक्स वन मस्ट बी अवेयर ऑफ दिस फैक्ट वाई सच थिंग्स आर दे यू नो प्रेस्क्राइब एट दिस लेवल एंड means the kind of thinking that we have the kind of notion that we have towards sex in our country like india how it is very much different from the country like america what are the things that we can learn from them why why have we made this thing a kind of taboo you know of talking this particular thing we we feel it 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 is like taboo nobody wants to talk about that in reality everybody is interested but in appearance nobody takes interest why why do we have this dual nature why should we have this dual nature being the student of literature at least we should not feel ashamed of you know talking of these all things very frankly because these are the things of our concern this is something concerned with our body this is something concerned with our our personality how can we ignore it how can we escape it of course we can't there should be good discussion on such things on such issues why have we you know made them that much complicated i don't think it's uh, good so at least good conversations good discussions should be there on such issues of our concern of the you know while talking of the personality while talking of the people of course it should not be in that manner in which you know people in the village do there should be good discussion okay so and one more thing uh, due to which this uh, uh, becomes very important for the teenagers here we have the protagonist whose name is holden callfield h o l d e n holden callfield c a u l f i e l d holden callfield he has become an icon icon for teenage rebellion you know in erol sans in teenage how you know the teenagers become rebellion how they they revolt against the system how they revolt against the society because their way of thinking is very much different from others so for for them for such kind of you know teenagers this uh, protagonist Holden Caulfield can become a model, and that's why this novel is much more appreciated among teachers and among adults, among teenagers as well. Okay, let's now talk about the writing style of this novel. Very interesting things those I found in this novel, particularly the novel is narrated. in a subjective style see these all information that i am telling you all are available on wikipedia i am not making my own comment i have collected this info from wikipedia you can also see that there i have just made them in in a pattern in a good pattern for the discussion okay the novel is narrated in a subjective style subjective style means with the perspective of a person not objectively but subjectively novel is narrated in a subjective style from the point of view of the protagonist so here the protagonist becomes the narrator okay whatever he narrates whatever he feels that we understand we understand the whole story by the point of view of the protagonist following his exact thought process whatever he thinks 
whatever he feels whatever he tells us we understand the things by his eyes we have to see through his eyes we have to think through his brain it means what it means the interpretation can be limited but no one must apply one's one one's own interpretation otherwise the interpretation will become very much limited and literature loses its essence when it is limited and that's why you know polyphonic novels are uh, uh, considered to be great novels because there we have several voices together several point of views together of course in that uh, you know uh, ambiguity in that uh, chaos we we are unable to reach to a certain point but yes that polyphonic novel makes the literature great makes the novel great okay so here we have this subjective approach we have the subjective uh, style we have the point of view of the protagonist we have to follow his exact thought process for getting the novel for getting the story there is flow in seemingly disjointed ideas and episodes so when you read the novel you will find that uh, there are there are disjointed ideas there are disjointed episodes but in that even we find some connection we find some you know flow there critical reviews affirm that novel accurately reflected the teenage colloquial speech of the time colloquial you know colloquial means colloquial speech means what the speech used in normal conversation in daily life so in that speech of the teenagers how how the words they use that we find very clearly here in this novel and the words and phrases that appear frequently include so we have here a list a very small list of some of the words which are very frequently used there in the novel let's understand those words and in which context they are being used see actually uh, when we you know change the context of the word they they you know their meanings get changed so in in the colloquial language colloquial speech of the teenagers of that time the language that was prevailing at that time we find them here in the novel and that makes uh, this novel very much appreciable for those teenagers okay uh one word that is there is phony p h o n y what is phony superficially acting a certain way only to change others perception in a word in hindi even it's not anki just for making others believe what you are not okay just in acting superficial acting you you have to show you have to change the perception of the people regarding you okay that is called phony and then there is one phrase uh that is that killed me that killed me what is the meaning of this is there any murder taking place of course not suppose uh, as uh, you know in hindi conversation when we talk uh, one of my friends he gave sweet to his younger brother and after eating that uh, his younger brother said zahar hai zahar ekdam zahar hai he didn't mean that it was a poison he meant it was very delicious it was very tasty so zahar jo zahar hai wahan par uski meaning badal gayi उस कॉन्टेक्स्ट में वो यूज हुआ और उसका अर्थ हो गया बहुत बढ़िया ठीक है इन द सिमिलर मैनर हियर वी हैव दैट किल्ड मी मीनिंग ऑफ दैट इज वन फाउंड दैट हिलोरियस और एस्टोनिशिंग एस्टोनिशिंग सो दैट किल्ड मी देन देर इज वन वर्ड 
that is called flit f l i t flit meaning of that is homosexual then there is word snowing s n o w i n g snowing means sweet talking then a whole sentence that is there a got a i got a bang out of that i got bang out of that what is it what's the meaning of this one found it hilarious or exciting then there is one phrase shoot the bull what is the meaning of it have a conversation con containing false elements <laughs> many of the people have you know such habits they they always shoot the bull they always talk by using false statements and they talk about those things very confidently then they will have give give her the time <laughs> the meaning of this uh, particular uh, line give her the time means sexual intercourse uh, this was since uh, you know used in the conversation of the teenagers you know in which way teenagers talk among them then very beautiful word that we have is necking n e c k i n g what is the meaning of it passionate kissing especially on the neck and one condition is there that is used in parenthesis in the in the bracket that is clothes on so clothes on clothes are on there means uh, and kissing takes place and that especially is done on the neck and that is called necking n e c k i n g then another phrase that we have is chew the fat meaning of that is small talk and the word the can means the bathroom then prince of a guy the meaning of that is fine fellow and another word prostitute <coughs> the way in which i wrote once on the post about home tuitions how uh you know after giving home tuitions you become habituated of taking some money for some hours so in hindi some of the close friends when they ask in that manner bhai ek ghante ka kitna lete ho so in in that way the word prostitute is being used here means sell out prostitute means sell out or phony means when uh, you know you you make you make yourself you know sold you know for for the money for some causes for some uh, works that not actually uh, uh, something um, concerned with the you know uh, this uh, profession of uh, playboy or call girl but uh, meaning of the prostitute in in their in their conversation the conversation of the teenagers is making oneself sold or behaving as a phony okay that's all for today thank you have a nice day